how Novak Djokovic became a tennis god. I remember extremely well the first time I ever saw Djokovic play. It was at the 2005 Australian Open. I was in the gym on an exercise bike watching Marit Safin play this unknown Serbian. Watching that match, I could see that Djokovic had a lot of potential. He already had very good returns. He was very good from the baseline, but his serve had a lot of room for improvement. And physically, he was miles away from the top athletes in the game. Fast forward to the summer of 2005, I was at the Wimbledon qualifying event watching the players up close. One of the guys I saw was Novak Djokovic. He was playing his third round qualifying match against Wesley Moody of South Africa. Now Wesley had a massive serve and he ended up actually winning the doubles title that year at Wimbledon. What I remember extremely well from that match was Novak's returns. He was so explosive from this position, pushing off and reaching those extremely wide serves. And I remember very vividly how he ended up winning that match and running over to hug his parents who were on the side of the court. Novak eventually reached the third round of Wimbledon that year, but it wasn't widely reported because Murray had also broken through at the same event. Now at the time, much of the tennis world had their eyes on three players, Gael Monfils, Richard Gasquet and Andy Murray. These three players had massive success at the junior level and they were now progressing onto the pro tour. Monfils in particular, who won multiple Grand Slams as a junior, was a player that many experts had their eyes on as the next Roger Federer at the time. Over the next few years, Djokovic went from strength to strength. In 2006, he won his first ATP title. <laughs> Djokovic. And in 2008, he broke through at the Grand Slam level, winning the Australian Open. This made him a solid top five player by the end of the year. And he had some great encounters with both Nadal and with Federer during this period, but he always seemed to be living in their shadows. This was a period when Federer was snapping up slams quicker than Andy Roddick could serve. During that period between 2005 and 2010, Djokovic ended up having a reputation as a rule bender and someone who would quit when the going got tough. Andy Roddick was one of the players that ridiculed Djokovic in his press conference, where he famously said that Djokovic had lots of injuries, had SARS, bird flu, and the common cold and flu. Yeah, no, both of them? Yeah, both. Yeah, yeah. in the back. And a back. And a hip. And, and what, when he said there, there's too many to count. And a cramp, bird flu. Yeah, a lot of things. Yeah. Beijing hangover. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's got a pretty good Anthrax. Ailments. Uh, SARS. <laughs> Common cough and cold. He's either quick to call the trainer or he's the most courageous guy of all time. You know, I think it's up for you guys to decide. At the 2009 Australian Open in the quarterfinal stage, Roddick was leading two sets to one before Djokovic retired once again. And Federer was asked about this after his quarterfinal victory, and he said, it's happened before. It's not like he's the guy who's never quit in his career. Well, I mean, it's happened before. So, I mean, it's not, it's not the guy who's never given up in his career, you know. So that's kind of um, disappointing to see, you know, when you've got two top guys playing each other and you give up. I mean, he gave it up against me uh, in Monaco this year because of, uh, last year because of sore throat. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, uh, those are kind of things, you know, you, you wonder about. Uh, now, when you have Federer and Roddick, two of the best players in the world at the time, poking fun at you and saying that you're a quitter, it has to really sting. So what exactly was going on with Novak? During that entire period, Novak was searching hard for solutions. He was working as hard as anyone else on tour. Novak said at the time that he was doing two sessions per day on court, he was lifting weights, and he was cycling or running for hours at a time every single day. So it didn't make any sense to him why he felt so bad physically on court in some of those big matches. He tried different fitness routines and tested out different trainers. He hired various coaches looking for a solution, technically thinking that something in his game was letting him down. He also started doing yoga and meditation, thinking that maybe it was the mind tricking his body into breaking down. He also had nasal surgery, hoping that this would help him breathe easier on the tennis court. Little by little, it all helped him and his performances became more consistent. However, in the Australian Open 2010, disaster struck once again in his quarterfinal match against Songa. Djokovic was leading that match and on his way to victory when he suddenly hit the wall. He physically couldn't carry on at that same level. Songa eventually won that encounter and Novak said it was the lowest point in his career 
at the time. However, on the other side of the world, on the small island of Cyprus, was the man who would eventually help Novak become a tennis god. Dr. Igor was from Serbia himself, and as he was flicking through the channels that day, he saw Novak suffering on the tennis court. He suspected at the time that Djokovic had some food allergies that were causing these huge problems in his game. And luck was on Novak's side because Dr. Igor shared some mutual friends with Djokovic's own father. So a few months later, they met up and discussed Novak's problems. Dr. Igor was asking Novak about his sleep, about his food routines, about what he would eat on the match day, and just building up a profile about Novak. Eventually, they hatched a dietary plan for Novak, and the first step was to eliminate gluten from Novak's diet. Now, gluten is the protein that is found in wheat, and it's common in so many foods. It's very hard to actually find gluten-free food, so most people are eating gluten on a daily basis. Djokovic himself stated that his diet growing up, and even when he was a pro, consisted mainly of Italian foods and heavy meat meals. This means he was eating a lot of pastas, pizzas, steaks, chicken breasts, all of the foods that are so common and that are actually encouraged by a lot of nutritionists for tennis players. He also loved desserts and sweet stuff, so he was eating a lot of sugar in his diet. Djokovic said that after eliminating gluten from his diet, he started feeling much better after just a few days. And once he reduced his sugar intake and eliminated dairy, he said he knew his life had changed. After a few months with his new diet, Djokovic lost over five kilos. Now this was a professional athlete who was already in great shape physically. So many of his family and his friends started to worry about him. They said he was getting too skinny. However, Novak himself said he felt amazing and felt great on the tennis court. He felt faster, he felt lighter, and he felt more energetic. At the end of 2010, Djokovic helped Serbia win the Davis Cup, and this gave Novak the motivation and the boost he needed for the 2011 season. Heading into 2011, nobody could have predicted what was to come. Djokovic 1.0 was gone, and Djokovic 2.0 had arrived. Beast mode switched on. Djokovic ended up having one of the greatest seasons in men's tennis history, and many experts say it was the single best season of all time. Djokovic won the Australian Open. He's got it. Wimbledon. There's a new champion. And the US Open. And Djokovic went on a 41-match winning streak all the way from the start of the season until the French Open semis where he lost to a very inspired Roger Federer. By the time that Djokovic had won the US Open in September, he had only lost two matches the entire year. Now, during that US Open victory, he ended up having a slight back injury, and this caused him to have a few losses at the end of the season. He ended the season with five Masters titles, three Grand Slams, and year-end number one. So was it just a simple diet change that allowed Novak to become a tennis god? Or was there more factors involved? In my opinion, eating the right foods for Novak's body was the final step, the icing on the cake, if you will, in Novak becoming Novak 2.0. In 2009, Djokovic hired Thomas Muster's ex-fitness coach, and they started working on his physical conditioning. Now, I remember some of the interviews that Jeb did at the time speaking about their training. They were really focused on the plyometric side of things. Jeb had Novak doing a lot of single leg hops, a lot of work on the stairs, and just becoming a better athlete all round with that explosive speed. This was going to then translate over to the tennis game because Djokovic would then have more power coming from the ground up. If you think about the legs, the importance of having powerful legs in tennis, this is so often overlooked by a lot of amateur players. Novak started hitting the ball harder because he had that more explosive power coming from the legs, and this was because of his fitness coach at the time. In 2009 and 2010, Novak was having some serious issues with his serve. In particular, in the trophy position, his elbow was too tucked into his body, was too low, and he also had the arm extended too far away from his body. His motion became more like a cricket ball, as opposed to actually hitting a tennis serve. He hired Todd Martin at the time, and they started working on different aspects of the serve. That seemed to make things even worse. But by the end of 2010, we could see that Novak had fixed the elbow issues. 
his elbow was bent to a 90 degree angle, his racket was much closer to the body, and he had that ideal throwing position in the arm. And since then, we could see that Djokovic's serve has played a major role in his success at the Grand Slams. He now serves with great accuracy and wins a lot of cheap free points with that motion. The main factor in all of this was the willingness of Djokovic to never stop looking for solutions. He wanted to become better. He wanted to become a Grand Slam champion over and over again. He wasn't happy at being number three in the world. Djokovic himself said that some days he was training 14 hours a day. And this is a lesson to us all. Never feel satisfied with the game. Always strive for perfection. Even if we never achieve it, we'll get much further than if we're happy and we just sit back and relax. So there you have it, how Novak Djokovic became a tennis god. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have enjoyed it, make sure you smash the like button. If there are any lessons you'd like to see from us in the near future, leave a comment down below and we'll film the top suggestions. Signing off, Coach Simon from TTT. All the best and see you soon, guys. Take care.